Hi, my name is David Youngman, and this is my Ultimate Capo video. Well, this is somewhat of a review and comparison of some of the best capos on the market. But even more than that, this is a video uh, that is sort of a call to all capo companies to make the capo that has it all, the Ultimate Capo, or what I would call the David Youngman Capo. And uh, over the years, my experience with capos, I've always been frustrated that, you know, I use a capo and it's lacking something. Well, then I switch to a different capo and it has that other element, but then it's missing something from that first capo. And so I've gone through all the different capos and they just don't put it all together, you know. And so I'm asking capo companies to try to put it all together and I understand there are some design challenges and some some really hard things to face with that um, but I have thought this through I've been thinking about this stuff for a number of years now and um, you know if any capo company would like to contact me about working through those different challenges and just see what ideas I do have I would be happy to talk with them about that um, I'm not going to be sharing that stuff in the video today I just want to go over the criteria the things that I think that ultimate capo would have and show how these capos have, which capos have those different elements or which ones do better than others for each of those criteria. Here's my criteria for the ultimate capo. The first thing is the radius and that's the rubber piece here and, and the curve it has or flatness it has and it should have some sort of adjustability to fit across the strings at the right curve. The next thing is the adjustability in pressure. Uh, the ultimate capo needs to have some way of adjusting the tension on the strings. Next is the even pressure, an even pressure across the strings. And some capos tend to pull a little harder maybe on the bass side um, than it would on the treble side or vice versa. Um, but the, the ultimate capo should be able to pull down on all the strings evenly right away without having to fiddle with the capo to get it right. Uh, next is the effects the capo has on the tone of the guitar. And next is how easy it is to put the capo on and take it off. Um, it should You should be able to do it with one hand uh, very easily. It shouldn't require two hands. Uh, and the next one is sort of the same thing, but being able to store the capo on the headstock easily and securely and out of the way. And the final criteria is uh, the aesthetics or the design and the, the quality of the capo. Now I'm going to go through each criteria and just highlight what, which of these capos does a good job in each of those areas. Uh, so the first thing is the radius and uh, this is a G7th Heritage capo and this does a really good job uh, in this area. This has some new technology. Um, and if I push on the outsides here, that makes the, the pad here flat. And then if I push on the middle of it, I think you can see it, it forms a curve. So it has this kind of built-in adjustability um, as you clamp it onto your guitar. Um, and it's done through a mechanism inside here. It's not just the rubber uh, forming or anything like that. Uh, so to me, that's... Uh, really quite genius uh, in this area. The Thalia Capo uh, does have different inserts that you can put in here for different uh, radiuses, but if you're switching between guitars, that could be an issue. Um, I know the Shub Capo, they have information on their website about how the rubber just kind of forms to the radius of the guitar. So it does fit all of them, but I think it can, because this is softer, it can uh, cause a little bit more of a muted effect to the tone. Next is the adjustability of pressure and basically anything with a knob on it is to me about the best. Um, you know, and There's the Elliott Capo. Uh, this one's pretty cool because it's the clamping action. This is a Diodario Tritone uh, but I like that it has that adjustable tension. The Page Capos have it. Uh, the G7th, uh, this is a Performance 2 um, it's adjustable. You push it, and wherever you leave off 
applying pressure, it'll latch at that spot. And then to unlatch it, you push this little trigger here, and then it unlatches. So it's adjustable, but uh, it just doesn't quite have the fine tuning as a, a knob does. Uh, next would be the even pressure across the strings and uh, that's going to be any of these ones with the U shape uh, they're just going to be the easiest to get that you know they have a, an, a pull from each end of the bar and uh, you know that's kind of ideal some of these other capos like uh, that have the, the hinge type it might you might place it a little wrong on the the neck and it can be kind of tense here and it might not have applied the right pressure on this end and you might have to twist it a little bit. The next criteria is the tone and I found the uh, the G7th Performance 2 capo to to have a, a really good tone. On, I tried it on different guitars and it just always seemed to have a nice fullness and clearness and uh, bring out a resonance in the guitar. Um, it was kind of the one, without even trying to do tone tests, it was the one I just kept wanting to, to pick up uh, to put on my guitars. The Thalia Capo also had a really nice tone to it. Uh, they do have different inserts. Uh, I think this one's a rubber one and they, they do have like a Teflon that makes this a little harder and causes it to be maybe brighter and clearer, uh, but you might lose some of that bodied tone. Uh, but some of the other capos were pretty good. They were a little more muted and some of them had a nice brightness but then they they lost some of that body and fullness. I'm going to show you a couple of recordings here just to compare a couple of capos to give you an idea that uh, to see if you can hear that there are just some subtle changes in tone. Next is how easy it is to put the capo on or take it off or move it around the neck. And um, everybody knows about the Kaiser capos. They're probably the most sold capo I would imagine because you just go into the into your music store and you see this hanging on the wall and you see that clamping action. It makes sense to you and you just think that's going to be easy. Um, and so that's the one you pick up. Some of the other ones you might look at it and it doesn't you're not sure right away how it works so you're gonna kinda gravitate towards that thing that looks the easiest to you and it and it is easy um, also the the Diodario tritone really easy one hand action and to me you know I love that for a performance it's less distracting so anyone that works like that um, and especially when they have good handles in the right position that you can grab um, really helps Next is how easy it is to store any of these capos on the headstock. I think you can figure out a way with pretty much all of these um, storing it on the headstock, but it needs to be easy. And again, it's going to be like the Kaiser or the, the Diodario or any clamp style um, capo. The last criteria is the design, the aesthetics, and the quality of the capo. And certainly the Thalia capo, I think, uh, does the best in this area. They've really gone to great lengths to make this a high quality beautiful capo. You can get it in a lot of different options. There's I think three different metal finishes that you can get and then you can choose lots of different veneers, wood veneers and pearl and you know, different types of things in there uh, to really customize it to your style. Um, you know, it's got a lot of weight to it. You can tell it's good quality materials the spring is quite hard, uh, which for me, I wish it were. That makes it a little harder to use, but it also shows its quality, I think. Um, so just a really nice uh, capo there. I do want to point out the Elliott capo. These are really nice capos. Um, I think they run like $1 to $200. They kind of go in that range, depending on some of the things you have done to it. Um, but this one, it's all stainless steel. They do engravings on here. 
this one has Walnut Valley engraved on it. I won this at the Walnut Valley Festival. Um, it's got a nice tracking mecha mechanism here for the, the adjusting the tension. And then also the, the push button here I think is really nice. Just makes it really easy to use uh, putting that on and taking it off. Um, and then the other one I really like is the, the G7 uh, Heritage Capo. And uh, this one I like with kind of compared to the other U style. I feel like the the supports here, the, the U shaped thing, I like the little bit of heft to it. Um, and I like that they've got it all lined with the, the rubber inside, even on the inside of the curves here, uh, just so you don't mark up your guitar. I like this larger knob a lot. That just it feels really good, makes it really easy to use. Um, they also do. I don't think it's an engraving, I think it's kind of a printing, uh, but when they sent this to me they printed my name on it, which is really nice of them, I don't know if you can see that with the glare, uh, but anyway, just a, a really nice capo, and uh, you know, I think a lot of that stuff shows how much the company uh, uh, believes in their product and wants to inspire players to me when I have products that are just built really well, it inspires me in my own work and in my playing um, and composing. Uh, so those are all the criteria that I really believe the ultimate capo should have and you can obviously see they're represented here in all these capos and, uh, we just need to find a way to kind of bring it all together thank you so much for watching my ultimate capo video uh, hopefully in the coming years we see something come of this uh, who knows uh, but I like the idea that we have this video to sort of maybe document a progression towards that that would be pretty interesting to look back on um, but for now, uh, down in the description, I do have a link there that you can go to. It's called a Trello board, and it has uh, a more detailed breakdown of my comparisons and rankings of these capos for each of those criteria. And once I say goodbye, there's going to be a little video clip explaining uh, more of, of what that looks like, how to use that board. Um, but I'm going to keep doing my best to, to push the right tools and try to make sure us guitarists have what we need to make uh, the music uh, that we feel inspired to make. So um, thanks again, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Here's a quick look at the Trello board that I've created. And you can see we've got a bunch of different lists in here. And the first one shows a couple of instructions on how to use this board. And there's also a, a note here for a, a link to my website. In this second list, this is all the different capos. And you can see we can scroll through either with the mouse wheel or, or with the slider on the side here. And you can click on each of these, and there will be a link inside uh, that would take you to the manufacturer's website and, and right to the, the page with that particular capo for more details. The third list, I've shown the criteria again that I've gone over in this video and then I've got each criteria broken down and I've ranked uh, like for the radius uh, you can see how each of the capos rank how I've ranked them and for all the other ones you can see I've I've ranked them and you can scroll through and see that